Okay, good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. Today is the big day, FOMC day. Okay, I hope you guys will trade it very well. Obviously, with our, you know, our analysis and all kind of stuff, what we provide, especially on a fundamental level. And it's me, Adnan Rahman, your boy, with the great Sir Stuart Cowell. Okay, and morning. So good morning, and, sir. Um, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well, sir. I'm doing well, guys. Yeah. I'm really sorry. Yesterday I had some personal tasks. I was really out of the scene. I'm really sorry for that. Okay. So as we are running out of time and we have much to discuss, let me take you to the disclaimer and let's see what do we have. Okay. This webinar is intended for BD Swiss clients and trading is highly speculative and carries high level of risk. So please make sure that you must know what you're doing, okay, especially in terms of your leverage and your lot size, because this is a double edged sword, sport and you know it can have multiple outcomes. Okay, so please make sure you know what you're doing. Uh, getting this out of the way, let me come uh, to the fundamentals for now, the macro picture or the bigger picture. Okay, we have from the Bank of Japan, RBA, European Union, EU, Euro, and then the JORS data and then FOMC. More or we'll focus towards the FOMC and what do we see from that. And I will be discussing the if this and that scenarios and especially the scenarios uh, of, of the statement, you know, what kind of statement can we see? Okay, like if they're saying inflation is high, then what to expect if they're saying inflation is low or there are risk in inflation and you know what are the technical terms they use, that one. And then we will see overall what data do we have, uh, have from this US one, okay? So without wasting any time, I'll start with the Bank of Japan. What do we know from Bank of Japan? Let me get this to a bigger side. Okay, Bank of Japan, Bank of Japan has, you know, uh, uh, had has a rate decision and now the rate is like to 0.25%. That is almost a, a hike of 0.15 basis points. Okay, and uh, now this is a hike. Okay, and the main question is that are they going towards a tightening or an easing? Okay, this is the main question. And until now, uh, all we know is that, you know, there are expectations of a tightening, but it is not sure for now. Obviously, the upcoming news release will uh, make the path because this is something that as we discussed on in, in the week ahead webinar. Okay, and then Adnan, uh, no, 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 actually, <laughs> have actually gone down that route there's clearly clearly gone down that okay route. They've, very good they've announced a huge cutting of their massive massive bond purchasing program they're spending something like six trillion yen uh, a month on uh, by, buying uh, japanese government bonds jgbs have announced they're going to cut okay. that to three trillion so it's very much a, a quantitative tightening uh, angle sort mm -hmm. of move that is really the big surprise in the market. Up until early yesterday, uh, markets were still expecting a no move from mm -hmm. the Bank of Japan uh, yesterday, uh, this July meeting, and they did surprise later in the day. So the actual announcement wasn't a particular surprise when it came uh, because it had been sort of trailed in uh, in a lot of the Japanese press, the Nikkei, I think, uh, news group got it. Um, <clears throat> But the aggressiveness of the quantitative tightening, that cutting of uh, the bond purchase is, is very significant. So obviously the yen uh, spiked immediately. We went all the way down to the 200 day moving average on the uh, dollar yen uh, under that 152 area, uh, 153, 152 area we talked about before. There's still, you know, many would argue still it's very, very uh, weak yen, even at 152. Obviously it's not 162 where it was before. Um, but uh, obviously the intervention from the Bank of Japan has made it, uh, had its impact and we're into a cooler area. So there uh, probably less, mm -hmm. we'll see less visible signs of um, intervention from the Bank of Japan. But, you know, my personal view is they'll want it under 150 uh, at some point, uh, obviously depending on how um, hawkish or bullish the, uh, um, uh, the Fed are over the, you know, next six weeks till, uh, till September comes around uh, when they will look like to be cutting rates, obviously. Uh, the Bank mm -hmm. of Japan going in the opposite direction of everybody else, but playing catch up from uh, a long time ago, 2008, uh, the last time uh, Japanese interest rates were this high. So, yeah, it was uh, quite a, uh, you know, this time yesterday, it, it would have been deemed a surprise what they did, but uh, they trailed it later in the day. So it was less of a surprise when it actually came. So uh, a stronger yen was immediately apparent, but then it's sort of, it seeks, it's, uh, it's um, uh, whipsawed around since then, but uh, the trend remains very much uh up for the yen uh, dollar yen down pound yen down euro yen down um well under their 20 50 mm -hmm. moving averages 
Uh, but, you know, it was incredibly weak. So, yeah, big move from the Bank of Japan overnight. Yeah, thank you for, uh, you know, like getting this update because I wasn't uh, aware of this. Anyways, mm -hmm. now if we'll move towards the RBA, what do we have from the RBA? Uh, uh, you know, the Australian, uh, Australia maintained its 1% uh, quarterly growth in, in the second quarter of 2024. And then the annually price increased has accelerated from 36 to 3.8 in Q2 compared to the previous year and marked the first increase since quarter 4, 2020. So, 22. Mm. So this is a rise in pricing, but you know the favorite uh, measure of uh, RBA that is the trim domain that is uh, towards you know pointing towards a little bit towards a downside. Okay, so this is just type of a mixed bag we can say. Let's see what uh, you yeah, know the data yeah. uh, unfolds. Mm. Okay, on one side we have this uh, heavier or higher CPI, and the other hand the favorite one is trimmed mean and it is pointing towards the downside okay so this was from the rba it's an update obviously we'll be focusing more in detail on fmc and then when it comes to eurozone uh yeah okay the german data was weaker than expected with manufacturing mm -hmm. coming at 42.6 versus estimate 44 okay german was weaker i really cover german data whereas french pmi data was a little better french services came out of the contractionary area into expansion at 50.7 from 49.7 so this is a little bit of better uh, uh, data we are seeing and when it comes to bank of england rate decisions that is also the main event after this fomc both the markets and economist you know by economist means the research if, if agencies okay they expect bank to start its rate cutting cycle with 25 basis points of cut but that is you know trading a fine line between cut and no change to the rate okay again it's a balanced thing let's see how the data unfolds this is what we know uh from this all eurozone picture sir is there any other thing uh, i've missed I, I, well i mean the, the, as far as the uk is concerned um uh, outside the yeah i mean the services data was um pretty mixed yesterday the gdp data out of the eu area was uh, was okay uh yesterday as well uh spain in particular mm -hmm. seems to be uh picking up quite quite rapidly but as far as Again, bank of england's concerned mixed... in the uk the um uh yeah expectations for a uh, august cut of uh of, of slip quite significantly so again it, that's looking like september but you know they may surprise uh who knows but uh the, the mood music mm -hmm. uh out of the the, the speeches i've been reading and uh, heard in the uk it doesn't look like they'll, they'll go again uh on uh, this week but we'll see we'll see um never say yeah. never yeah obviously data unfolds itself yeah, yeah. okay when it comes to jolts uh, we had this jolts yesterday and uh, uh, jolts data indicate that the labor market has normalized okay and you know it's a big reading you can uh, you know the guys can take a screenshot if you want okay jobs opening fell to 8.18 million in june down from an upwardly revised 18.23 million in may implying that the current level of posting is about 10 percent lower than the trend from 2008 and 2019 mm -hmm. so this is somewhat of a slowdown what they are wanting to see the layoff and discharge rate fell to 0.9 percent indicating Indicating that the demand for existing workers remains strong, even as demand for the new workers have declined. Again, some sort of a, a slowdown or a weakness uh, can be seen. Not weakness, you do the word soft. Soft is more better. Yeah, yeah, okay? so, yeah, yeah. Even though still a very, very robust is, uh, market. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, even though JOLTS data shows that the labor market is cooling and manageable at a manageable rate, warnings of a sign, warning signs continue to be raised. Okay, simple slowdown, th the slow type of thing okay the labor demand remains concentrated in a few industries Work, workers are now this is the thing workers are feeling less confident about job availability and the employers are more hesitant to hire new employees this is something that is clearly pointing towards a softness in the market okay and then for the q2 employment cost index this is a very important index when you are looking into this costing okay what it does is it you know has the cost of all of that employees you know what how much of a cost is it, it it occurs on a single employee okay which is expected to confirm that the labor market is no longer contributing into the upward pressure on inflation okay so this is also something you'll be seeing but Moreover, we'll focus on the FOMC. So 
in all in all in a nutshell this jolt's data is pointing towards a softer tone okay so now the main thing the fomc this is the main i'll be focusing much on this one as market will focus okay what updates do we have from fomc this is this is a meeting that is usually in comes in six uh, weeks okay regular meetings every six week to set the policy and federal funds target rate okay and then the fomc is expected to keep rates unchanged at 525 or 550 let me zoom in okay and then market is fully pricing in a september cut as well as around 65 basis points of a cut by the year end that is already what we know this is the information that we have okay and now uh, when we come to previous report, what do we have in the previous report? In the May report, okay, it was said that there was improved risk of regarding inflation and employment. Okay, what they were trying to say, okay, that everything is in balance now, and uh, you know we have gained that balance, and our uh, it's our dual dual mandate of keeping uh, inflation under control and the job market safe. This was what they said in the May report. And then when we come to June 12th report, they said no reduction in the policy target range anticipated until more confidence is needed. What does this mean? It means, this statement means that inflation was going down. It was going on the path where they wanted to go, but still they need more confidence. It means they need more data accompanying or, you know, cementing that inflation going towards the downside. Okay, so this is good for their uh, target what they want but this is you know draining some side sort of a weakness as well okay this is you know overall picture i've given you of the previous report okay now when it comes to inflation what do we know both core cpi and the pce deflators have shown easing signs okay uh, keep this in mind this itself means somewhat of data going towards the downside and when it comes to labor market When it comes to labor market the unemployment rate this is important the unemployment rate has risen to 4.1 percent in june which is above the fed's year-end forecast of four percent okay leaving very little room for further weakness okay because this 4.1 percent was something they have told told us in the dot plot so now as we are again on this four and 4.1 percent threshold or that brink so we have no much room uh, for a dance over there okay so this is very important keep this in mind with unemployment already at year-end projections okay and growing signs of labor market slack the employment side of the federal mandate is back in focus okay because yeah. exactly you are on the brink so this is something we need to focus on that where is the employment side going okay we can't just let go it Okay, what happens to the growth? Q2 GDP printed better than the market expected at 2.8% and also well above the bank's year-end projection of 2.1%. Okay, so this is, uh, the growth side is doing well. This is again on the uh, projections or expectations what Fed want, that they want their growth to be stable, their uh, inflation to go down and the labor market to remain soft. And, okay, so this is what they want, they are getting. Okay, and when this growth is towards the positive side, that means they have totally ignored or bypassed that recession stuff. Okay, and then when it comes to September rate cut, markets are fully pricing a rate cut for September, and there is a growing consensus that Fed will use the Jackson Hole Symposium to signal a revaluation of economic outlook. Okay, because don't forget in August we have this Jackson Hole stuff, so a revaluation may occur at that time okay for the september meeting so keep this in mind as well because everywhere there is a chatter that uh you know september this which 100 percent red cut kind of stuff so these things can change in the jackson hole uh, be sure to have this risk in your mind as well okay yeah, yeah so just, now sorry adnan sorry adnan just on that you're absolutely sure. right the market is absolutely 100 percent priced in that there will be a rate cut by september interestingly this morning i've just oh, from last night's close i've just looked at the futures at the moment and uh, there's an 11 point nine percent chance that we'll get to the uh 475 500 rate so 11 nearly 12 percent now uh, are expecting perhaps a 50 basis points cut by the september meeting i think personally obviously that seems a bit over the top but that has been increasing a month ago it was around about six percent um so expectations mm -hmm. are, are rising uh so definite move in september uh so the two cuts by the end of the year look uh, pretty 
likely to happen as well now as we speak but as you said mm-hmm. um obviously we're going into a bit of a quiet phase for october uh, for august uh, but you're right see what the, mm-hmm. this, uh, the end of august at the jackson hall meetings uh, if anything's you know yeah, it's, it's, it's significantly or been a, a major change from where we are i can't really see it but you never know you never know yeah okay so uh, before going to this outlook and the statements i'd like to have a focus over here okay this is the overall data what do we have from the us uh, guys you can take a screenshot of this one uh, trust me it took me a lot of time to manage all of this okay the gdp quarter and quarter uh, for the q2 is 2.8 percent versus 1.4 percent so it's pointing mm. towards an upside okay and when you comes to inflation it's like three percent versus 3.3 percent core inflation 3.3 percent versus 3.4 percent okay i mean uh, pc uh, index and all of this you can just go i'll uh, you can just read yeah. Nice, that nice little All slide, this, that, and that that uh, that yeah. that captures everything really nicely. And, yeah, and obviously, yeah, we'll talking about, it, but we'll talk, speak about obviously more in the week. Yeah. Uh, what happens tonight, tomorrow, and with the Fed? Yeah. What's going to happen with non-farm payrolls on Friday? So yeah, nice, uh, yes, nice sir. slide. So, what what i'm trying to say you in this one that this all of this data uh these maybe 10 entries are focusing towards the same thing towards a slowdown mm. what mm-hmm. fed wants okay all of this one you can just take a screenshot guys later on you can study all of this while going mm. into economic calendar and finding each of one again and again okay so now here comes the main part the outlook and the statement okay now what do we have from the outlook stuff june fomc meeting in their updated dot plot the fed moved away from indicating three potential rate cuts okay for this year suggesting only one rate cut was likely however the recent data may prompt that the fed to reconsider the stance okay what i'm trying to say earlier at the start of the year we had that six rate cuts and then five and then four and three and now we are somewhere between one and two or three maybe okay the fed aims to avoid causing a recession and may start moving towards less restrictive monetary plans a monetary policy okay they are avoiding a recession why because they are not saying that the job market is weak they are using the word slow or soft okay and then gdp gdp is high so totally when your gdp is high and your job market is uh, soft not weak that means you have avoided a recession that is what they were saying and now they have got okay the outlook is this one but now we come to statement statement is the most important thing we need to focus on okay pay attention to the fed's language regarding inflation and the other and the labor market okay as we have talked earlier we are already at the brink and now that is what you need to focus on as well core inflation is at uh, at its lowest since 2021 keep this in mind also that inflation is on the low okay now what do we have in terms of dovish or hockey signals signals for a rate cut is dovish okay if you have a signal for a rate cut by signal i mean any statement or a stance for a rate cut that is dovish and what can those stances be according to the historical statements okay inflation forecast have revised down if you have this sentence it means it can be dovish okay like increasing confidence on inflation going to target they are telling that inflation is going towards target means inflation is going down so this is something you can trigger in your mind that that's a dovish stance growth forecast have revised down okay now what we were saying that as the growth is higher it means they have you know negated that recession stuff but if the growth forecast goes down that means it's kind of a dovish okay weakening in the labor market again a softer labor market and a weakening labor market are two different things okay so weakening in the labor market or the g growth has gone down okay that is a, a concern towards the dovish side and then if you have uncertain signals for a rate cut okay like rate cut is not certain okay that can be a little bit of hawkish why like see if they say we need more confidence is needed on inflation okay some sort of a confidence more confidence is needed that means they are not sure that the inflation is on target okay and if they are not sure that means they are expecting or they think or they fear of that the inflation is high okay that can be a little bit of hawkish uh elevated inflation okay or economy may be overheating okay and policy moves uh moves policy moves risk reversing inflation progress i mean that uh, if they make any policy adjustments like a rate 
cut then it can you know reverse this inflation down picture towards the upside so these things can move into an hawkish stance as this data is not more over towards this basis point movements it is but it's not focused on that much the statement is most important what do we get okay and on the other hand if there is a non-committal statement i mean there is no commitment made just a passing statement okay this is this and that is that no new information then that can be a mixed scenario so what to do in this case like see if we have a dollar uh you know a dollar uh, hawkish stance if the dollar is hawkish so you can look in towards this canadian dollar the weakness of canadian dollar or this uh, strength the weakness or uh, you know the weakness in the Swissy and GPP for now, the euro for now. And on the other hand, if the dollar is bearish, then look for the AUD, uh, NZD, and JPY uh, towards a little bit strength because these are kind of hawkish ones. So this is for FOMC. Anything you would like to add? I try to cover each and everything in a box. Yeah, no, that's a very extensive uh, fundamental analysis. Yeah, that's. I like your um and the, the, that that review, that st the statements and outlook as well is be key. Like I say it's you know it's a bit of a, probably a bit of a non-event tonight, but uh, you never can tell. I mean that's why they remain high impact events, even though the market is uh, sort of priced. Uh, expectations of uh, nothing happening as far as rate cuts and uh, concerns for September. So anything that changes that outlook will be will be the thing that moves markets. Um, so yeah, there we go. Thank you for that outlook. Yeah. Um, obviously the mar the stock markets um, uh, had a better bounce a wee bit um, yesterday, uh, and they were up. Uh, Microsoft reported earnings overnight. A bit of a miss on their um, cloud business, but um, yeah, it's we're into obviously a very sort of quiet. Uh, period. Um, obviously, I mean, the other key thing technically would be maybe some volatility today as we actually round out the month. But I think a lot of those uh, month round out uh, rebalances of, of portfolios has already happened uh, <clears throat> uh, ahead of uh, ahead of this uh, sort of holiday season. So anyway, take care, everyone. We'll see you again tomorrow with the output of uh, what the Fed have decided and uh, any changes to their statement and any uh, market impacts. And obviously, then tomorrow. Uh, we've obviously got the Bank of England as well. So uh, take care, try it, trade carefully, and we'll see you all again tomorrow. All the best, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye.